Uh, hello, um, good day to you guys. My name is Mark and welcome to my Marky journal. So here I am going to be talking about my project, uh, Project Hourglass, but to just briefly explain to you guys uh, what this whole project is about. This is for my school, Guineo, uh, and it is about uh, vegetating architecture and creative typology, uh, which you combine the two. Uh, creative typology is essentially just mm, doing something different from the usual typologies, such as houses, hospitals, uh, coffee shops, uh, something like that. And for vegetating architecture, it's um, ideally it's using the plant and making a purpose of that plant uh, rather than just using it visually and just placing them um, in your house. Um, so what we want is to produce something uh, out of the plant so it could be useful. So right here, um, this is Project Hourglass and I hope you guys enjoy. So let me read this to you. Um, Project Hourglass is an extension of establishing a wellness lifestyle within Grace Village, Quezon City, with the intention to harmonize with the community's college sports complex for its students and athletes. Project Hourglass utilizes its extents and measurements of its interior spaces to produce protein powder for its users, while inviting the community into the space for product consumption and physical activity. So essentially my building is um, reacting and harmonizing with the site of Grace Village where there is a college sports complex or a sports complex for the school uh, that is ongoing. And what I kind of did was to create this project around the idea of protein powder, producing them and uh, using the access spaces for um, community product consumption and physical activity. Uh, product consumption for the plant-based protein powder, consuming that, and physical activity for something like a gym. So uh, let me talk about my site. Uh, this is Grace Village, Castle City. Uh, this is a satellite image from Google Earth, and these are the coordinates on top if you want to search. And what we need to know here is this is where my project location is going to be, this uh, reddish square with the dot. And what we need to know about the site is the zoning. So first we have the residential. Uh, which is kind of expected since this is a village so we're going to have a lot of residential uh, footprints here and industrial right here on the middle the the mid grade something in the middle uh, that's the school uh, the Grace Christian College Grace Christian College and uh, this is Grace Christian Sport, Sports Complex and this is like uh, the church and the kindergarten school and um, the darkest gray here is commercial areas these are essentially shop houses and rentals and right here on the side is a road network what we need to know here is this one access road so we can learn from this it, what we can learn from this is uh, right when you enter the village you can uh, automatically see my building footprint and I think that's a strength so yeah you can see it immediately on this end and right here is a site visit that I did uh, earlier so what we have here is a satellite image of my micro site where my lot is going to be and we have ABC views so for letter A right here 
we have the village entrance and you can see the gate here so it is what I said a while ago as you enter that gate you could see letter B right here the parking area which is what um, what's happening in my lot right now it's being used as a parking area an open field kind of something like that a mix of pavements and maybe a couple of trees so yeah that's parking area letter B and letter C right here is across the lot it's the sports complex so what we can uh, get from this is um, the projection of a lot of athletes are going to be here and right after uh, they use the sports complex they can go right across the street and go to my building so that's also a strength and right here is my site plan uh, we have here this rectangle which amounts to 450 square meters and this is um, Grace Village street section and uh, what essentially we need to know here is the village gate this is where it all starts uh, as I said a while ago you drive along you see the parking area right here and then as you drive along turn right uh, you see Grace Sports Complex and right beside it is Grace Gymnasium uh, yeah that's basically the section of car and this is this kind of solidified my uh, stakeholders, which are athletes, villagers, and students. Those three. And right here is where I came up with the idea of producing plant-based protein powder. I asked myself, like, um, what if I explored the idea of plant-based protein powder? So athletes can you know use them because I didn't want to open another uh, gymnastic stadium for my building uh, I wanted a place uh, where they can go after they work out or they train so I think uh, consuming this product is one way to do it so I researched uh, plant-based protein powder so Essentially, what we need to know about this powder uh, first is it is it is used during pre or post workouts, and it is built it is made to for your muscle build and recovery. And the difference uh, here, since this is plant based, uh, difference from um, protein powders like whey, uh, it reduces the possibility of chronic diseases such as heart disease and uh, diabetes and obesity. So it is a good alternative. Kind of fits together. So next is uh, how do I grow this uh, protein powder? So I researched this pea plant and other name Pisum sativum, but the reason why I chose this because the pea plant is complete with the amino acids and it can stand alone uh, as a protein powder. And what we need to know about this plant uh, growing this is for growth rate it takes about two months, 60 to 70 days, and the yield is two to six pounds per 10 feet grow and it can grow for it can grow indoor or outdoor so it it doesn't really uh, need much sunlight it could uh, pass on partial sunlight for four hours and it doesn't like harsh sun yeah and you don't want them to be I have much. And right here is the process of how you turn the pea to protein powder. So first you grow them. Then second is I need to mention that growing these uh, they need to be on a trellis because 
uh, they're kind of like vines that need support. Uh, without the trellis, they'll just drop. Uh, they're alive, but they're just on the floor, scattered. So you're gonna need a trellis, uh, like this one right here, to help them support, to help support the plant. And next is washing. Uh, you get the, the pea pods, so you wash them so it can be clean. And then you peel the pod. Uh, you peel the peas from the pod using uh, this machine, a uh, pea peeler. Then you sun dry right here. Uh, this is to make the peas crunchy so it could be easier to turn them into powder later. So right after drying them, uh, you're gonna want to put them in a blender or a grinder to crush them and it will turn the peas into powder. And next is storing. And voila, you have a plant-based protein powder. Alright, so a lot of these things uh, reminded me of the hourglass. Uh, the concept of it is it is a device used to measure the passage of time but I see it as a physical process of sand going down but in my case it's powder so I took this hourglass concept and it kind of influenced uh, the form of my building so I took the building volume and an hourglass concept and it, this is what I ended up with the final form. And time for the part B. Uh, for my rope climbing wall, my first part B, uh, I thought of since plants, the pea plants need trellises for support, uh, I thought why not make them to rope climbing walls? And this is what I did. So we have here the rope wall with rope handles. Uh, vertically pruned vines. So the vines, uh, they are thin. So you, you, the farmers will prune them along the, the x, the vertical lines, the y axis, and uh, so people wouldn't step on the rope wall. Uh, wouldn't step on the plants. Uh, they would just be using the rope wall. You know, they could climb here on the handles. It's where they could place your hand, you can step on without harming the plant. And we have here two types of plant boxes, A and B, which A is only a single row of uh, these vines, and they go upwards. And for plant box B, uh, they, we have two rows, one goes down and one goes up. So I've thought since Pea plants, if you don't put a trellis on them, they just drop. Uh, why not maximize the building heights, uh, the, build, the, the floor heights, I mean, from floor to ceiling, uh, which is maybe 2.7. Uh, why not use the plants to prune them to go down and you can maximize the pea plant together, you know? And that's what I did here for plant box B. One goes down and one goes up. So, yeah. And here is the, the hamster wheel. My second part B. Um, so I'm showing here two sides of it. This is the first side where people can just enter this hamster wheel and hop on and jog. <laughs> and side B, this is where the blender comes in. So uh, I made this hamster wheel because I needed a blender to crush the powder, uh, to crush the peas rather, and I thought um, it's just a blade that turns around, so I needed to figure out how can I turn that blade without um, machines, or not machines, but yeah, you get the idea. Um, how can I turn it? you know, naturally or physically. And I thought of why not using hamster wheels uh, as it turns around. So that way, um, you could crush the powders um, in a more natural way. And this hamster wheel has two compartments. First is the wheel, and second is the blender. 
So for the wheel, we have a housing on the bottom for the rollers here, which is going to turn the wood later. And we have a framing on both sides for uh, protection and uh, the stacking of wood around. So you get that um, circle that um, rotates and a covering for everything. And for the blender compartment, we essentially have a, uh, two poles intersecting each other. And on the middle right here is a blade um, that is connected to this container of glass, which is essentially a blender container, which keeps uh, the dried peas inside and it's going to be crushed by the blender inside while the person is running in this hamster wheel. Then we have this storing on the bottom. Uh, so after that, you attach the two compartments and you have this hamster wheel for crushing and or grinding the, pe the, the dried peas. You turn it to powder. And here is my third party, my last one. I'm calling it the arrow glasses because this essentially on the middle of my building um, from the third floor to the ground floor and for the third floor you know after using the the rope wall the rope climbing wall you climb that wall you go you're essentially up then you're on the third floor then that's where the process continues after harvesting uh, you clean, you peel, then you sun dry them right here. So here I have a window and under that window uh, is a concentrator shaped like an hourglass um, towards this container which heats up and uh, which heats up the peas and dries them. And right here on the side you can see that it is a removable container. So you remove it and then you drop the peas, uh, the dry peas, and they go down to the second floor. So the process continues again. So the next part of the process is powder. So since this is on the second floor, it goes with the hamster wheel idea. So after dropping it here in this glass, you, you get it from there and you place them on the blender. Then you start running on the hamster wheel, you crush them, then you get the, the powder and drop them here on a rotating lid and you put the powder there. And it drops on the first floor again for storing. So this is, uh, this is like a popcorn maker <laughs> right here. Uh, it's what it essentially is, it's for storing so you could, it is celebrated on the first floor. And uh, we wouldn't have to worry about uh, expiration because from what I've researched, uh, after drying, it's not vulnerable anymore to time and maybe it is one year. Uh, one year, it could be stored here in this glass. And there are some people who are saying could last for two to three years, but um, I'm going with one year. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the, the container spot right here, where you get uh, protein powder. Yep, and this is my site development plan. Uh, essentially, this is just to see my building on site, and I've placed parking lots uh, there too, and I leave the space on the middle an opening so people could walk um, better. This is my axonometric uh, drawing or exploded building diagram and right on the bottom is my building. Uh, this is the first floor. We have um, the posts and columns here and we have, if I zoom in here, you can see uh, these are you can see that these are uh, the eating areas and the middle is right here uh, above uh, is 
where the powder is stored. So after that, it could be used uh, in the kitchen right here for kitchen use. And we have a stairs on uh, the back. Yep, that's for the first floor. Then second, uh, this is where the hamster wheel is, right here. You guys can see it. And essentially uh, around it is a gym. And third floor, uh, this is where the drying is, right here. And we have the peelers, we have faucets right here. We'll see better later at the floor plan. Just just to see it visually on how the building works. Yeah. Alright, next. Um, this is the ground floor plan. So right here, you start here on the middle. Number one. Uh, that's the main entrance. And as you walk um, along at the entrance, you get to see the counter right here. And behind that is the kitchen. What's interesting in this plan is the openings between the kitchen and the counter because there are two openings here where uh, the, the sales lady could get the order from the customer here and they could uh, get the order and uh, talk to the chef here and get the order and the chef could uh, prepare the food, get it from the fridge, cook them, prepare them, and finish, and uh, they give the, the food here in this spot. And on the sides are two and four cedar uh, tables, and on the side are like hangout spaces, like under the tree, uh, uh, under the vines, you could just chill under the roof wall. Yep. And we have walkways for when you are going to climb them. And we have a stairs on the back right here. Oh yeah, and uh, for the steps part, uh, when after the kitchen you have a pantry, which is number four right here. This is the pantry, and this is like it's their it is their locker room for the staffs. Uh, and they have their own um, comfort room and this is the utility room and this is the customer's uh, comfort room yep yeah that's basically it for the first floor uh, now next is the second floor plan right for the second floor uh, you start we start with the stairs then we have landings on uh, four landings on both sides, and after you go out, uh, after you use the stairs, you are approached with a men, the men's comfort room and the women's comfort room, and right beside that is where the yoga mats are going to be, uh, gym mats where you could uh, use them for ab workouts. Or for cool downs and number five is where cycling machines uh, for cardio and number six is where my hamster wheels are going to be and the second floor party from the hourglass right here on the middle so uh, you get it you get the, the dried uh, pea plants uh, pea peas dried peas here and you use the blender here and you so it is also a substitute to treadmills because you wouldn't have to use treadmills because treadmills use electricity and the way I designed these hamster wheels uh, don't require them so I think uh, it also saves energy and it's a good substitute and it works and number seven is when you go on this hallway uh, you get to see this like uh, mini gym. It's kind of like uh, a small subscription, and yeah, we have four openings on both sides. Landing areas. For the third floor, we have stairs here, and again for landing. 
in, on the middle is for sun drying compartments of the hourglass party and on the side are uh, sinks for washing then peeling here this is where the pea pods are being peeled and uh, these are wooden containers used for uh, replacing wooden containers of the party where you can just drop them out and this is my roof plan uh, essentially it's just showing the inclines of where the water, rain water is going so it goes here, here and up here it goes uh, the roof courtyard uh, has some inclination that goes out so the water goes at the back of the building so yeah this is my building elevation uh, you can see that all of the parties are on the middle uh, for the third one on drying second for uh, crushing and the first floor for storing yep. Next uh, is a side elevation. This is the left elevation. And you can see here the rope wall, uh, the stairs, and the landings, and their metal framings for safety. And here is a longitudinal section of my building. So right here, uh, we can zoom in. Uh, this is where people are going to order and eat here. And this is the space where they can just chill and hang out, both sides. And then we go up, this is the second floor party and the hamster wheel. And this is cardio and this is for free weights. And the third is for the drying process of the peas. Next is... Um, my cross section. Uh, this is just to give a better understanding of the program. So this is where people order. This is the kitchen, and this is um, the comfort room. And this is stairs, men's locker room, a women's locker room, and the hamster wheels for running, and third floor for drying. And uh, very open space. So that's my section. Uh, here is a perspective of my building. Yes. And here is perspective, another. The other one was a front uh, perspective. This one is a side. And next, we have a close-up of the rope wall. If you look up, that's where you where you see it's where you climb. And this is um, another perspective on open space on the second floor gym area. And what we what I need to tell here is almost all parts of the building are. Uh, walled up and handrail like this. Yep. And for the interiors, this is the like the lobby or the counter, the counter space. And this is the glass for storage, There's where you get the the powder and store them on a protein powder container. And these are the two holes that I was talking about that is connected to the kitchen, where the bigger hole on top is where you communicate face to face with the chef and the one on the bottom is uh, where the, the trays are going to pass through and, for, and the orders. Um, I've also patterned them with the shape of the hourglass. And next is an open space for when people can just chill and hang out. Uh, Personally, I love this. It's nice that you have the rope wall on top. Maybe you just could use your laptop here and just chill or study. Students can study here. And here uh, is the second floor. A render of 
uh, the parking, the second floor parking, and the hamster wheel. And the third floor parking, right here. And this is the peeler and the table uh, for the process. And this is where you dry them. And courtyard framing. Yep, and this is my physical model. Uh, it's scaled one is to one hundred, and you can see the punctured uh, windows on top of the courtyard roofing right here. Uh, four uh, windows, four windows for uh, the four parky here for drying. Yep, and this is a close up of um, the structural component. Yep, and this is the model in a different uh, view, in a different scening, kind of. And here is another where the model is on the site, with context to the site. Yep, uh, I do have a video prepared, a walkthrough, so you guys could understand my building better. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So that is the walkthrough of my video and right now um, I, want, I do want to talk about the yield of how many protein powders I can make and I base it on how much peas I can grow within the party a while ago. If you could see a while ago there was measurements for the plant boxes, 3 meter, 3 meter, 3 meter, 3 meter. And uh, essentially, each of them have has these um, uh, has a basis on the weight that I need. So it's like two to six pounds uh, for one container. So it's five pounds for one plant-based uh, protein powder container. And uh, at the end, I've. Um, I ended up with 40 plant-based protein powder containers. So I'll be able to have 40 in two months, which could be played around, like 20 for one month, depending on the time that you plant them. So if I were to multiply that uh, in a year, I would get 600,000 if I base it on the usual prices of the plant-based protein powders, which is like 2K or 2.5 PHP. So that's just one part of the building. Uh, I've provided the building a place to eat and a gym area. The reason why I um, did the eating area is because I wanted the building to I wanted athletes or the people using the sports, um, the sports complex. Uh, I want them to go to my building after they train or before. Uh, they could go to my building and eat there, while my building is where the Hourglass Building is using its own product to uh, create nutritional foods because you can use the protein powder and uh, make recipes. Uh, there are a lot of them. And I think the building owner, uh, conceptually the building owner, uh, could create a lot of them and sell them. That is an expansion of the business. And the gym also 
uh, an addition for memberships. And I figured that the villagers are the people who are going to use that second floor gym because they are the ones who don't have access to the sports complex. So either way, uh, um, it's for the village. So that's about it for the hourglass. So I've been talking for a while now. And I'm glad I shared this. And thank you for listening. <laughs> this is Project Hourglass. I am Mark, and this is my Marky Journal. Thank you.